7 Seditious Facts About Gravity We all learned the law of universal gravitation at school, but what do we really know about gravity? Apart from the information put into our heads by school teachers. Let's update our knowledge. The Law of Universal Gravitation Everyone knows the famous legend about the apple that fell on Newton's head. But the fact is that Newton didn't discover the law of universal gravitation, since this law is simply missing from his book Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. There is no formula or definition in this work, as anyone can see for themselves. Moreover, the first mention of the gravitational constant appears only in the 19th century, and, accordingly, the formula couldn't have appeared earlier. By the way, the coefficient g, which reduces the result of calculations by 600 billion times, has no physical meaning and is introduced to conceal contradictions. Of all the known fundamental constants, the numerical value of the gravitational constant is determined with the least accuracy, although the importance of this value is hard to overestimate. All attempts to shed light on the exact value of this constant were unsuccessful, and all measurements remained in too large a range of possible values. The fact that the accuracy of the numerical value of the gravitational constant still doesn't exceed 1 5,000th, the editor of Nature magazine defined it as a stain of shame on the face of physics. In the early 1980s, Frank Stacey and his colleagues measured this constant in deep mines and wells in Australia, and the value he obtained turned out to be about 1% higher than the official value currently accepted. Laboratory Confirmations It is believed that Cavendish was the first to demonstrate gravitational attraction in laboratory dummies by using a torsion scale, a horizontal rocker with weights at the ends suspended on a thin string. The rocker arm could turn on a thin wire. According to the official story, Cavendish brought a pair of 348-pound blocks from opposite sides to the weights of the rocker arm and the rocker turned at a small angle. However, the methodology of the experiment was incorrect and the results were falsified. Cavendish spent a long time redoing and adjusting the installation so that the results fit the average density of the Earth described by Newton. The methodology of the experiment itself provided for the movement of the dummies several times, and the reason for turning the rocker arm was micro vibrations from the movement of the blanks, which were transmitted to the suspension. This is confirmed by the fact that such a simple installation of the 17th century for educational purposes would have to stand, if not in every school, then at least in the physics faculties of universities in order to show students in practice the result of the law of universal gravitation. However, the Cavendish installation is not used in educational programs, and schoolchildren and students take their word for it that two blocks attract each other oddities of the moon. If we substitute reference data on the Earth, the moon, and the sun into the formula of the law of universal gravitation, then at the moment when the moon flies between the Earth and the sun, for example, at the moment of a solar eclipse, the force of attraction between the sun and the moon is more than two times higher than between the Earth and the moon. According to the formula, the moon would have to leave the Earth's orbit and begin to rotate around the sun. The moon, among other things, doesn't show its attractive properties in relation to the Earth. The Earth-Moon pair doesn't move around a common center of mass as it would be according to the law of universal gravitation, and the ellipsoid orbit of the Earth, contrary to this law, doesn't become zigzag. Moreover, the parameters of the orbit of the moon itself don't remain constant, the orbit, according to scientific terminology, evolves, and does this contrary to the law of universal gravitation. You may ask, how come, after all, even schoolchildren know about ocean tides on Earth, which occur due to the attraction of water to the sun and moon. According to the theory, the moon's gravity forms a tidal ellipsoid in the ocean, with two tidal humps that move along the Earth's surface due to the daily rotation. However, practice shows the absurdity of these theories. Because according to them, a tidal hump with a height of 3 feet in 6 hours should move through the Drake Strait from the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic. Since water is incompressible, the mass of water would raise the level to a height of about 30 feet, which doesn't happen in practice. In practice, tidal phenomena occur autonomously in areas of 600 to 1200 miles. Laplace was also amazed by the paradox. Why in the seaports of France full water comes sequentially, although according to the concept of a tidal ellipsoid it should come there simultaneously? Gravity measurements. The principle of gravity measurements is simple. Gravimeters measure vertical components, and the deviation of the plumb shows horizontal components. The first attempt to test the theory of mass gravitation was made by the British in the middle of the 18th century on the shores of the Indian Ocean, where, on the one hand, there is the world's highest stone ridge of the Himalayas, and on the other, the ocean bowl filled with much less massive water. But, alas, the plumb didn't turn towards the Himalayas. Moreover, ultra-sensitive devices, 
gravimeters, don't detect a difference in the gravity of the test body at the same height both over massive mountains and over less dense seas of half a mile depth. To save the theory that was taken on, scientists have come up with a prop for it, allegedly, the reason for this is isostasy, denser rocks are located under the seas, and loose rocks are located under the mountains, and their density allows them to perfectly fit everything to the desired value. It was also found experimentally that gravimeters in deep mines show that gravity doesn't decrease with increased depth. It continues to grow, being dependent only on the square of the distance to the center of the Earth. There are natural anomalies of gravity, which also have no clear explanation from official science. Here is one such example. A cluster of cars by the side of this mountain road is a common thing. Tourists from Armenia and foreigners can't resist stopping to see the miracle with their own eyes. The road rises into a hillock at an angle of about 10 degrees. However, every driver feels that the usual gravity, in this case, doesn't hinder movement. A simple test will help to make sure that this is an anomaly. Instead of rolling down, the car goes uphill without my intervention. In some areas, the car even picks up speed. And walking up the slope is clearly easier, as tourists say. The river, which flows upwards here, finally destroys the usual idea of the laws of nature. The absence of gravity in small cosmic bodies. The independence of gravity from matter is confirmed by the fact that, with the rarest exceptions, the gravitational attraction ability of small bodies of the solar system is completely absent. With the exception of the Moon and Titan, more than six dozen satellites of planets have no signs of their own gravity. This has been proven by both indirect and direct measurements. For example, since 2004, the Cassini probe has been flying near Saturn and its satellites from time to time, but no changes in the speed of the probe have been recorded. With the help of the same Cassini, they discovered a geyser on Enceladus, the sixth largest satellite of Saturn. What physical processes must take place on a cosmic piece of ice in order for steam jets to fly into space? For the same reason, Titan, Saturn's largest moon, has a gas tail as a consequence of atmospheric runoff. No satellites predicted by the theory of asteroids have been found, despite their huge number. And in all reports of double or paired asteroids that supposedly revolve around a common center of mass, there was no evidence of the circulation of these pairs. The companions happened to be nearby, moving in quasi-synchronous orbits around the Sun. The attempts to put artificial satellites into asteroid orbit ended in failure. Examples include the NEAR probe, which was adjusted to the asteroid Eros by the Americans, or the Hayabusa probe, sent by the Japanese to the asteroid Itokawa. Alternative studies. There are a large number of alternative studies with impressive results in the field of anti-gravity, which fundamentally refute the theoretical calculations of official science. Few people know that Viktor Grebenyakov, a Russian entomologist who studied the effect of cavity structures in insects, described the phenomena of anti-gravity in insects in the book My World. Scientists have long known that massive insects, such as the May beetle, fly rather contrary to the laws of gravity, and not because of them. Moreover, based on his research, Grebenyakov created an anti-gravity platform. Grebenyakov died under rather strained circumstances and his achievements were partially lost, but some part of the prototype of the anti-gravity platform has been preserved and can be seen in the Grebenyakov Museum. Another practical application of anti-gravity can be observed in Homestead, Florida, where there is a strange structure of coral monolithic blocks, which is popularly called the Coral Castle. It was built by a native of Latvia, Edward Lidskalman, in the first half of the 20th century. This man of a thin build didn't have any tools, not even a car, no equipment at all. He didn't use electricity at all, also because of its absence, and nevertheless somehow descended to the ocean, where he cut out multi-ton stone blocks and somehow delivered them to his site, laying out with perfect accuracy. After Ed's death, scientists began to carefully study his creation. For the sake of experiment, a powerful bulldozer was driven, and an attempt was made to move one of the 30-ton blocks of the coral castle. The bulldozer roared, skidded, but didn't move the huge stone. A strange device was found inside the castle, which scientists called a DC generator. It was a massive structure with a lot of metal parts. 240 permanent strip magnets were embedded on the outside of the device. But how Edward Lidskalm actually made multi-ton blocks move is still a mystery. Some researchers analyze the vibrational nature of anti-gravity. This effect is clearly presented in the modern test, where drops hang in the air due to acoustic levitation. Here we see how, with the help of sound of a certain frequency, 
you can firmly hold liquid droplets in the air. And here's the effect, that at first glance is easily explained by the principle of the gyroscope, however, even such a simple test for the most part contradicts gravity in its modern sense. In a famous research of John Searle, he held in hands unusual generators that rotated and generated energy. Discs with a diameter of 2 feet to 30 feet rose into the air and made controlled flights from London to Cornwall and back. The professor's experiments were repeated in the USA, Taiwan, in Russia, for example, in 1999, an application for a patent of a device for generating mechanical energy was registered. Vladimir Roshchin and Sergei Godin, actually, reproduced the Searle effect generator, a generator based on the Searle effect, and conducted a number of studies with it. The result was a statement, you can get 7 kilowatts of electricity without any loss, and the rotating generator lost up to 40% in weight. The equipment of Searle's first laboratory was taken to an unknown destination while he himself was in prison. The installation of Godin and Roshchin simply disappeared. All publications about it, with the exception of the application for the invention, disappeared. Gravity and the theory of relativity. According to modern misconceptions, the speed of light is finite, as a result, we see distant objects not where they are located at the moment, but at the point from where the beam of light we saw started. But at what speed does gravity propagate? Analyzing the data accumulated by that time, Laplace found that gravity propagates faster than light by at least seven orders of magnitude. Modern measurements of pulsar pulse reception have pushed the speed of gravity propagation even further. At least 10 orders of magnitude faster than the speed of light. Thus, experimental research is in contradiction with the general theory of relativity, on which official science still relies, despite its complete inconsistency. In fact, orthodox science signed its own impotence when it introduced the so-called dark matter into scientific circulation. Then it was discovered that spiral galaxies rotate as a whole, which contradicts Kepler's law. Contrary to the law of universal attraction, the stars on the periphery rotate too fast and had to fly apart under the action of centrifugal forces. At the same time, all sorts of searches for dark matter particles with the help of the most sensitive devices have led to nothing. But even at the beginning of the last century, scientists knew that the space around us is not empty. It is all completely filled with a multitude of different matters, our primordial matter in the terminology of the concept of a heterogeneous universe. At that time, these primordial materials were called ether and convincing evidence of its existence was obtained. For example, the well-known experiments of Dayton Miller. However, at a certain moment, the world's scientific thought was deliberately led in the wrong direction, and that is why there is still no clear scientific explanation of the nature of gravity. Well, we recommend turning notifications on, so that you don't miss the next videos. See you on our channel.